All right, so I think that's enough time to make sure that we have everybody. So first of all, those of you that are here with us today as attendees, thank you very much for being here to the orientation for our winter semester with Helms College of Arts and Sciences. As always, I'd like to extend my, my thanks to those from the faculty, departments, the dean's office, everybody that's here with us um, this morning to welcome our new students is coming in. I know it's a very exciting for all of us as we get started towards that winter semester. I also hope you do have a wonderful holiday. I know we have that coming up as well. Um, so first of all, I'd like to welcome our Dean of the University, uh, Ms. Hollywood Bumgarner, who is with us today. So Holly, thank you very much for being here as always. And while I'm going to let you do your introduction. So thank you so much. Well, thank you so much and welcome. And I just want to say on behalf of the Helmos College of Arts and Sciences and Guy Harvey Oceanographic Research Center, welcome to your new home. As our graduate students, you're considered our junior colleagues in your respective fields, here to gain mastery in a discipline, that is a master's degree, or deepen your knowledge in the applied philosophical or theoretical underpinnings of your chosen field, and that's the doctorate. So as your dean, they want me to give you advice. What they want is for me to do this feel good, rah, rah, let's get you started kind of speech. And that's not what you're going to get. So what you're going to get is some advice that when I became a grad student, my dean gave to me, which I found to be really helpful um, when I was working through, through my degrees. And it went something like this. Your faculty are not typical employees. They have contracts that are unique in the world of work, a uniqueness that makes American higher education different from the rest of the world. So what's gonna happen? Well, those same faculty will demand everything from you. They will frustrate you. They will baffle you. And they may sometimes even bore you. And don't tell them I said that because I can see the headlines, Dean calls faculty boring and I would never ever uh, recover from that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying each, uh, of these emotions are things that you'll experience as a graduate student, because I want you to keep in mind your faculty are not here solely to teach you, and certainly are not here to be entertaining in a classroom. And so you might think what I did when I was starting grad school, so then what is the point of, you know, this, and aren't those bad things? We don't want to be frustrated. We don't want to be baffled. Well, the point of them is through them, you will grow. Through them, you will come to understand what it takes to be a master or a doctor. And if you pay attention at a college graduation, there might be 500 undergraduates to every five master's students and every one doctoral candidate. Your faculty teach undergraduates, but they model for graduate students. That's a big difference. So it's up to you to learn from the other half of the faculty job, not just what they do in a classroom, but their research, their scholarship, their community projects, their grant work, their service. It's up to you to pursue relationships with the faculty members whose projects most interest you. It's up to you to develop your own cool projects. And that is both the joy and the pain of graduate school because it's active, not passive learning and passive education, meaning you are as responsible for your own learning as your faculty members are. And that might not make sense yet, but eventually I hope you'll find that topic that excites you and you're passionate about. I hope you don't give up when faced with a blank page on a thesis project or a mound of data needing crunching. It's easy to give up. Don't give up. When you're in labor, laboring over that project and you have to work in the morning or your kids are sick or you've got writer's block or you're nearing quantitative collapse, that's when you need to remember this moment in your orientation. This moment, when your dean tells you, you will get through this, okay? You have this marvelous support system of not only the faculty I've been discussing, 
but an incredible, welcoming, encouraging, supportive staff. And all of them understand. We have all been right where you are. We all had the bills to pay, the late night study migraine, the elusive sentence we were searching for, the data overload. We all had moments where we cried in graduate school, moments where we might've thrown things at home, of course, never on campus. Moments where we detested uh, somebody who asked the question that we just didn't have the answer to. But we also had the moments where we got together with our colleagues for a beer and talked about our breakthroughs. Moments when an advisor gave us a small smile of approval that sent us to the clouds. What I can tell you, what I will tell all of you is that it was worth it. So I'll leave you with this. Join a student government association, get active in a student org or club. It helps keep you sane, trust me. Make friends because you need each other to get through your classes and your projects. Know that you have a voice that matters. Graduate students are special to us, unique in your roles too. Remember you're working to become part of a small select group, a group that the rest of the world calls the experts. And stop by and say hello to your dean in person. I have offices on both campuses at the Oceanographic Campus and main campus. And I am so proud of you already for starting out on this path and proud to welcome you as a Halmos College graduate student. You you make what we do worth it too. Thank you. Well, Holly, thank you very much for that fantastic welcome. I'm going to introduce next. So first of all, so I didn't choose myself initially. My name is Bert McAllister. So I'm the director of graduate admissions out here for Helmholtz College of Arts and Sciences. I've spoken to many of you through emails back and forth, or at least some number of my team has. So right now I'm going to introduce uh, Mr. Theodore Uwe who's going to take it away from here. He's our graduate recruiter out here. In particular, he works with all the tours and one of the things we do at the Oceanographic Center, as well as focus on our marine science recruitment. So a lot of you have worked with him as well. So uh, Teddy, why don't you take it away from here? Thank you so much for being here as well. Thanks, Brett. And uh, I do also get to work with our wonderful National Security Affairs and International Relations students as well. Uh, so thank you all for coming with us. Just wanted to briefly run through what we're going to be discussing today. Uh, so before I get to hand it over to all of our Wonder Department resources out here, we're going to quickly run through a few different things you're going to need to know as a student. All right. So first up, SharkLink Access. Most of you have already at least logged in once as you do need to register for classes through the SharkLink portal. Uh, this is where you're gonna get access to a variety of the different applications you'll use during your time as a student, including our job application portal called JobX. If any of you have uh, gotten federal work study or have been offered other types of financial aid where you can work in our paid positions departments, uh, this is gonna be the place where you're gonna come first to go ahead and start looking into our various jobs all around the campus, uh, as well as any formal position so for any of my marine science students, if you are offered, say, like a teaching assistantship or a research assistantship, the official actual job application is done through the JobX portal over here. Uh, it's also where you're going to go to be able to view your grades, register for courses, as well as view any of your different personal information that we have on file. Um, if at any point you have any issues getting into your SharkLink account, we do have IT support that it can assist you either on the main campus or also out here on the Oceanographic campus. Then for parking, uh, we're very fortunate to be able to offer parking as part of tuition costs here at NSU, so you do not pay anything extra to have a car with us. You will have to get it registered, though, but you can do that online. Once you have done the online registration, and it's at the link that you see on the screen below here, uh, if you usually just type in NSU Parking Portal, there's a whole setup for you as incoming students to go ahead and register your car. You're going to need your car's title as well as your license to be able to send in for verification, and then once you are uh, fully admitted and have everything done as a student, you can come in and grab your decal. Uh, we'll also have those available for our students coming out to the Oceanographic Campus. One additional thing I will note for any of my students that are going to be out here at the Oceanographic Campus, we do have a special decal that you will also be getting specifically to come into the state park system over here. 
Then of course the shark card. Now, one misconception, I know I get a lot of questions about regarding the shark card is, uh, do I need it if I'm an online student? Uh, not necessarily, but you may need it just as verification purposes if they ever need to work with you on NSU processes. So you can request for that to be sent through the mail uh, if you're gonna be an online student, or you can go into our actual office in the Horvitz Administrative Building on the main campus and you can have them take your photo right there and print it out. Uh, so if you do it via the mail version, it usually takes about three to five business days, but you can do all the fill, uh, all the paperwork right there on the link uh, down below, which is nova.edu slash NSU card. Then finally, this is something that you all had to agree to in order to be able to register for classes for the incoming winter term, and that's going to be part of our student academic success and SAP. So that's going to be the student enrollment agreement requirement, which you must agree to in order so you can go through the actual process in Shark Link and register for courses through the WebStar banner. A part of this, you make, have to make sure that you have no more than nine credits of grades below a C, and that does include a C+. If you're ever having any issues whatsoever, we have academic advisors that are with all of our programs that can set up a time to meet with you, look over a plan of study. Maybe you need to have a little less of a intense course load. Uh, looking at scheduling management, they're always there to help with that as well. And then finally, um, this is a huge resource for any of you as you're looking into some of our different course availability uh, in reference to also working with our various programs on what's coming in for that uh, type of term is our graduate catalog. This overviews many of the different policies regarding any of the different fees, such as the student services fee you get, as well as the tuition breakdown, admissions uh, requirements, so forth, as well as graduation requirements. And then on top of all that, we have the course catalog detailing all the various courses we offer in any of our different programs here underneath the Hamos College. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our department resource offices. And first up we have is from our library services with Carrie Baker. Thank you very much, Teddy. Um, I'm gonna, yep, I'm gonna share my screen in just two seconds. I just wanted to introduce myself. I am Carrie Baker. I am the librarian over at the Oceanographic Campus. I'm gonna go over resources today that um, are applicable for everyone in the Hamas College of Arts and Sciences, not just Oceanographic Center. Um, Regardless of whether you your home library, the library that is closest to you and easiest for you to access is Alvin Sherman Library, which is on the main campus, or uh, out at the Oceanographic Center, um, the Oceanographic Campus Library, um, you will have access to both library resources electronically. And if you should need a print resource, you can have those resources couriered back and forth to your uh, preferred library. And so just to, you know, give you some, some information about both libraries, um, we're here to make life easy for you. We're here to help. We're here to um, help you find all of those good articles and those good books and conference proceedings. And uh, we help make uh, finding the uh, seemingly unfindable a little bit easier. So please reach out to us. Um, if you are at the Oceanographic Center, you can come in and talk to me. And if you're at Alvin Sherman Library, you can talk to any one of the librarians on the second floor at the reference desk. I'm just going to share my screen really quick. All right. So if you are... Um, Regardless of which library is your home library, you can always access the Sherman Library website, which is sherman.library.nova.edu. Um, all of our resources are found here, whether it's looking in the catalog for print resources or finding a database. So if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see some um, tabs here. Catalog only will find books um electronic and print full text finder will help you look for journals by name journal name so if you are looking for um the journal coral reefs this is where you would be able to see the type of full text access that we have we also have a link to Google Scholar here, and the reason why you should go into Google Scholar uh, via the library is that it authenticates with the library resources so that you can pull full text directly from Google Scholar without having to then, you know, find a citation through Google Scholar and then try to go through our databases to get access to that full text. If you're looking for a particular database, I recommend starting with databases by subject. <clears throat> um, 
from here, you'll be able to see all of the different subjects that the library supports. Um, the communications, there's uh, environmental sciences, we have uh, ocean and aquatic sciences, uh, so on and so forth. And so you can go through and see which ones the librarians recommend uh, for your specific uh, subject area. All right. And then just to let you know, the Oceanographic Campus Library also has a uh, website. It is nsufl.libguides.com slash OC library. The same resources that you saw on the Sherman Library are here, but the Oceanographic Campus Library has a few uh, niche services that are uh, applicable for uh, Oceanographic Campus students, but for any NSU student. So you do not need to be an Oceanographic Campus student in order to come out and use our services. So um, which department you're in, which college you're in, you can come out, you can study, you can come and use our scanners, so on and so forth. So um, I'm just gonna click on service guides briefly. We have a lot of hardware resources and we have a lot of software resources. So, and all of our stuff on this guide not only shows you what we have, but how to use it as well. And so if you need SPSS or R, if you need MATLAB, ArcGIS, um, we use EndNote as our citation manager here and you have free access to that. Um, it's usually a paid thing. NSU pays for EndNote for you as a citation manager. Take advantage of these things. Um, so if you need any of these, we, we actually have two Adobe Creative Cloud licenses as well. So if you need to manipulate a web page, uh, manipulate an image, um, all of that, you can come in and do that here. All right. So that is basically it. Oh, I'm gonna stop sharing. Are there any questions about library services? There's a lot that we we have out here. I don't want to um, take up too, too much time today. And so um, I'll take any questions if there are any. And feel free to make use of the Q&A chat for all of our students over here. Uh, the way that we're doing this today is that we're going to have all of our different departments, uh, it just, excuse me, presenting about their various info. And then afterwards, we are having some time for questions. So now is the time if you have any questions for Karen. Oh, yes. So are there printers on the oceanographic campus um, is a question that uh, just came through. Yes. So uh, the library does have a printer. You, as a student, get a $75 print credit. So um, you are able to print in the library. It is a color laser printer. So if you need to print in color, we got you covered. Any other questions? All right. Thanks so much, Karen. Thank you guys for having me today. All right. So now we're going to turn it over to Suzelle from our student counseling. Hi, hey, good morning. You want to go ahead and share the screen and we'll get started. All right. Okay, here we go. So good morning, everyone. My name is Suzelle Gennart. I'm a licensed mental health counselor and the director for our Center for Student Counseling and Wellbeing um, here at NSU, provided by Henderson Behavioral Health. So I'm here to tell you a little bit about this resource, what exactly is the counseling center, what services do you receive as an NSU student, and how can you access this? So um, as you may imagine, right, the counseling center is um, exactly that, a place where we provide student counseling, psychiatry support. Um, it's really a place to come and to explore, right, any thoughts, behaviors, things that you guys are wanting to share and to, to focus on, but really um, also a place to get support for your goals and whatever um, you're wanting to see happen and take place in your either personal or professional life. So usually we get asked um, why 
or what is the most common reason, right? Students usually come to see us and to seek our support. Um, and the answer really is anything and everything you can imagine. Um, there's really no issue too small or too big, like we always say. Um, some of the main reasons or may or more common uh, reasons may be uh, maybe it is anxiety and you know dealing with a lot of pressures and stressors and trying to find a balance right between all of, of life's demands, uh, but also taking care of of yourselves of um, you know trying to find balance in, in your life. Sometimes it is relationship challenges, right? Navigating uh, the dating world or family dynamics. Uh, sometimes it's adverse life events, you know, whether it's um, loss or, you know, again, any challenge. Um, we hope, you know, while your time here at NSU, there are no major roadblocks and no major hurdles leading you to, to need this type of support. Uh, but I encourage you also to see it as a place, not only meaning that there's a problem and you need to speak to a professional, but really it's a place for self-exploration also. So it uh, could be an opportunity to get to know yourself better, to get to know um, again, what areas you, you want to focus on and further develop, which would also help your professional development piece. So what exactly do you get as a student? So every student um, does get 10 free counseling sessions every year, meaning that if you begin services with us today, you have a year from today calendar year to um, use of these 10 sessions. And this time next year, you do get 10 more. Um, it really ends up being a couple more than that because your first visit, as you guys can imagine, is more of a getting to know you, uh, getting to feel really what is it that brings you in, what are you wanting to focus on, um, and then pairing you with a therapist who we believe will be the best fit and the best connection. So that um, initial session, sometimes even two sessions, does not count as one of the 10. Um, it starts once you're fully assigned with somebody and, and connected. Um, how the sessions themselves look is completely up to you. Um, most students want that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, some people do want to have either couples counseling or family counseling, bring in loved ones. Um, again, it's your time and your session, so it's really however you want that to look and who you want involved. Um, we do also have here on site psychiatric services available. So this may be for students who either have been on medication or want to explore medication as an option. Um, again, just know we have that on site as well. So the services themselves uh, could be in-person or telehealth, whatever is more comfortable for, for you or preference. Um, our office is located on ca main campus in Davie in the Student Affairs Building third floor, which I have a slide in there on that shows the location as well. Um, in terms of a couple last thing about services, uh, we do also have a 24 hour, seven day a week uh, crisis hotline. So it's our same phone number, just after hours that does go to an on-call licensed counselor. Um, again, the idea is for every student to know that there is support around the clock. Um, and that is again, for any behavioral health emergency. So maybe it is, you know, having thoughts of, not wanting to live, not wanting to be around. Maybe it's, you know, someone's having a panic attack and doesn't know how to quite calm down from that. Whatever may be going on, again, knowing that there's uh, support, you can just reach out to our number. Um, and that's probably one of the biggest takeaways from today, uh, from, from my piece, you know, is we want you to know there's a lot of resources, a lot of help here at NSU for our students, the goals we want you to succeed, but also feel supported throughout that process. Um, so I usually encourage students at this moment, take out your phones, plug in our number. You really never know. Maybe it's yourself who will need it. Maybe it, you don't use the service at all, but you run into a friend, a peer, uh, someone who says, hey, I'm going through a rough time, or you notice they're going through a rough time. And then you can say, hey, actually, you know, we have that service here on campus. Why don't you reach out to the counseling center? Um, so just emphasizing again, even though we do partner with NSU, we are Henderson Behavioral Health, which is a third party, meaning that everything is extremely confidential. We're bound by HIPAA. Um, so we would not tell anyone at the school that you're receiving services um, unless you uh, want and give us permission to communicate with anyone you need us to. Um, so okay, once again, the services could be in person or telehealth. Uh, and this is our number, the 954-424-6911. Now, to get set up, all you need to do, I'm going to just get this out of our way. All you would need to do is go to our website. Um, all, the whole registration 
is is online so it's really easy to do meaning that when you come in you don't have to do any forms paperwork like you usually do when you come see a, a provider um everything's already done through your registration so if you go to the site or you just look up um nsu uh, counseling you'll you'll find us right away or you could just give us a call and we'll guide you through the process um and then if you have any challenges as well so um any questions about the services i'm happy to take quick questions here if, if you have any of the services themselves before I move on. Okay, all right, open it up again at, at the end. Um, so a couple of last things. So many of you have probably seen or heard of apps, you know, such as the ones that are listed here on screen, whether it's Headspace, Calm. Um, usually when we're working with students, we recommend a lot of these and just kind of uh, not just only coming in to get the support, but also in between sessions, you know, having tools to help, um, you know, keep you in a good headspace, we'll say. So I say this because now the um, school recently rolled out a new resource in conjunction with our um, services, which is called TAO, Therapy Assistance Online. You may see posters of this floating around. Um, if not, just know this is available. It's free of charge as well to all not just students, but faculty and staff as well. Anyone who has a Nova email can use this resource. And it is, there's an app and there's also a web-based version. And what this is, is essentially a platform where you can go on to receive additional um, support, guidance, tips to deal with whatever challenge you may be going through. So there's topics on there. I mean, it is created for, or was created for um, college age students, meaning that there's topics that are relevant to um, your typical and common, you know, challenges and experiences you may be encountering. Um, there's things on there like dealing with time management, um, improving time management, uh, test anxiety, performance anxiety. There's some on imposter syndrome. Um, there's some on just relaxation and mindfulness and uh, tips on how to, to do that and tie that into your life. So there's also things even on financial tips and planning. Um, so pretty much any, uh, imagine it like a streaming service, you can either browse and see what's trending, or you can search for a specific topic that you're interested in. Um, but it is a self guided tool, you can go at your pace, and just kind of use it for what you need it most. So hopefully you can see this as an additional support as well. And again, all you need is your Nova email to access it. Okay, so for everything else, I mean, sometimes Again, we hope it's smooth sailing and you don't have challenges and, and, and need, you know, to turn to our center. Um, some people lean on, again, natural supports, friends, family, um, others in their life um, as well. But we hope, again, you see us as a, another person in your corner. Um, again, we're here to, to provide that support as well during your time here. So um, these are our hours. That should actually be eight. Sorry. Every day we do provide appointments until 8 p.m. Our center itself is open um, physically until 6. So once again, we're in Davie Campus, Student Affairs Building, third floor, um, and our number is the 424-6911. So I will put up the QR code. This will take you straight to our site. Um, again, any challenges, any questions, um, you can always reach out to me, but I'll open the floor right now for questions as well. Any questions at all? No? Okay, okay. All right. Well, any questions do pop up. Um, feel free to, to reach out. You can call and ask for me directly and I'll I'll guide you guys through the process. But thanks again for having us and really appreciate it. Take care. Thanks so much, Cizel. And uh, if any of you guys do have questions later on that you think of that you want me to pass on to them, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, or, of course, you can reach out uh, to their team specifically. Awesome. Thank you. Bye -bye. All right. So now we're going to turn it over to Nima from our CAPS office. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Let's see. Welcome to NSU. Let me see if I can share. Bear with me. Okay, one second, I'm trying to 
go full screen. It's weird. One second. I want to share my screen with you guys, but it's not. Okay. That's weird. Bear with me, my apologies. Share screen. Can you see the PowerPoint? Yes? Yes. Yes. Yes, you are all set. Yep. Okay. I'll do this. It's a little weird because it's showing up on my other screen. So good morning, everyone. My name is Naima Butler. I'm the Associate Director um, of Employer Relations in the Center for Academic and professional success, also referred to um, as the CAPS office. So what the CAPS office, um, as of you, if you um, are not aware, you know, at many institutions, um, departments are referred to as career development office, career services office, um, but our office is referred to um, the Center for Academic and Professional Success. So two years ago, actually, um, during the pandemic, our career development office merged with our academic advising um, office, um, again, becoming the Center for Academic and Professional um, Success. So who is CAPS? Um, CAPS mission is to provide a supportive and innovative environment for NSU students and alumni to gain the NSU edge through individualized career coaching, experiential learning opportunities, and engagement that enhances students, their academic experience, and empowers them to achieve their professional and personal goals. So you may say, okay, well, what does you know that mean? So our office, we serve our undergraduate, we serve all students here um, at the institution, whether it's an undergraduate student or students in our graduate um, program. For the six on the side of the graduate program and serving our students, um, the services that we provide deal with our career advising um, side of the house. As mentioned previously, um, your program does have their own academic advisor. So for those services, you refer to them. But in regards to career services, um, we do have designated career advisors who are here um, to assist you with our mission. CAPS services. So as students in the graduate program, services that we're able to offer you are career and professional exploration, internship slash job search, resume, CV, and cover letter, mock interviews, job and scholarship applications assistance, salary negotiations, LinkedIn and personal branding, and our Razor's Career Closet. Ultimately, guess what? Our students um, come to school, whether it's an undergraduate or graduate student, to you know get a job once they you know finish their program. For a master's student, you may actually be working in the field, so you're looking you know maybe to take that next step, which is why you've come back. Um, to school, or you're looking to, you know, once you finish your degree, you may be looking, you know, to apply for that, you know, that promotion um, within your organization or transition out to, you know, to another field. So we're able, again, we have um, designated career advisors who can help you with that. You may, I'll use Megan, for example, you know, Megan may be, have, be in a current field, but she's coming to NSU to get a master's. I'm in another area. And, you know, deciding how am I going to do that career uh, and professional exploration. We're here to assist you, you know, with that. So don't think that our services are just for undergraduate students. Again, we are here for our um, graduate students as well. Um, if you're looking for, you know, an internship, you know, in your field or, or a job search, again, um, we're able to um, assist. One of my favorite things that I love that we do is our Razor's Career Closet. So what that does is that that assists our students here at the university, again, undergrad or grad, that when you're taking that next step out, uh, we have an array of, of clothing items that can help assist you, you know, prepare for that um, interview. So again, a plethora of services ranging from career exploration to mock interviews um, to, you know, salary negotiations, you know, that's a, you know, big thing. You may, you know, guess what? You're going to graduate. You're going to have this master's degree. Hey, what's a comparable salary? You know, how do I negotiate if an employer is, you know, um, offering me one thing and I'm feeling that, you know what? I can ask for a little more. So again, we're here to help you with that. Handshake. 
um, as graduate students of NSU, you have access to Handshake. And then even after you graduate, you still have access to Handshake. So that's a unique thing about um, the Center for Academic and Professional Success is that um, not only do you have access to our services while you're here at the institution and Handshake, but you have access once you become alumni, you know, as well. So, you know, we want to build lifelong, you know, alumni partners and relationships. Um, so you always, again, still have access to our services. Um, Handshake is our online career platform here um, at the institution. And it's where, you know, students and alumni go to find jobs, internship opportunities. Um, this is where our office posts all of our um, events that we're hosting in regards to employer engagement. So if we're hosting, you know, our career fairs, if we're hosting um, networking events or resume reviews, um, anything event-driven is hosted in Handshake. So you have the ability um, to register for those events through Handshake. In addition, if you're looking again for opportunities, we have over, I know, um, 10,000 opportunities, right? It's a job, right? It's an internship for some of the best employers around the country. So it's not just employers that are in South Florida. I mean, they can be in California, they can be in New York, they can be in, you know, Oregon, um, providing a wide range, you know, uh, rather it's an internship as something as high as, you know, terminal degrees, because this is, again, the platform that the university uses to promote opportunities. Um, so we definitely want you to take advantage um, of that. So types of events and workshops that we host that can be, you know, of assistance um, to you. So on the professional development realm, um, we do resume cover letter um, workshops, um, networking, LinkedIn events, career exploration, um, building your brand, and more. Um, in regards to resume and cover letters, traditionally, uh, you know, we've often um, had events called Will You Be My Resume, right? And what we do is that we partner with employers and they come out as ideally like a speed dating um, thing. So you go to about, you know, we may have 15 employers and then you'll select about three employers that you're interested in going to. And then they're giving you feedback on your resume. So we, we want you to come to our office and meet with our career advisors to get that feedback. But we also want you to be in the position um, where you're communicating and you're networking and you're meeting with employers and you're getting, you know, that feedback on, on your resume um, on the spot. Um, in addition to, you know, building your LinkedIn profile. So if you guys don't have one, please, 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 uh, that that is, you know, very um, essential. We want our undergraduate students to have it. We want our graduate students to have it. But that's something that our office um, is able to assist you um, with. As, as you know, I mean, if you're in that job search, LinkedIn is also, you know, a good place to, you know, to look for that, but also to expand your network here um, at the institution. Um, employer events. Our office, we are responsible for hosting career fairs. So we do a fall career fair and a spring career fair open to all students. So that's undergraduate or graduate level students um, here at the institution. Um, fall semester, we just had a virtual um, fair. So I do know that we may have some, you know, some new NSU sharks who, you know, uh, maybe attended the program virtually. But in the spring, we actually will be hosting our fair um, in person. So we do a, a hybrid of events that cater to not only, you know, that student who's local in, you know, um, in Fort Lauderdale, Davy, or that student who's an online student and they're in, you know, um, Seattle, Washington. When we're offering um, our information sessions, as listed under the employer events, um, we do a hybrid approach. Yeah, um, when COVID hit, we really learned um, to pivot. So we went from, you know, doing lots of, everything in person to completely online and then now transitioning into a hybrid. So a student has the option to, if we have an employer on campus, to come in the office. But if you can't come in, you know, the office, you have the ability to join us um, virtually. So understanding that, you know, our students, particularly our graduate students, come from a variety of, of audiences so that some may be local um, and some may not. Um, and then again, our winter 2022 um, career fair is going to be, so save the date, Thursday, February the 16th, um, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. I'm here at the NSU um, main campus. I know it seems a little long, but we're we're actually doing a format this year of the event from the actual career fair will be from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., 
um, we'll be having on-campus interviews um, with the employers. So if you're meeting, you know, with an employer and they're going over your resume when you're at the career fair, you know, they have the option to, you know, give you a ticket and say, hey, we like to interview, you know, we're we'd like to interview you, please come back, you know, at 3.30 for um, your interview. So that way, guess what, we're, we're like killing two birds in one stone. You're attending the career fair, and if you're that stellar, you know, candidate, and you're, you know, making that connection with that employer, you also have the ability to do an interview within the same day. Um, again, our career fairs are, you know, idea for a variety, just not jobs, but, you know, internships, research, and philanthropy opportunities. So, you know, when employers are looking at students' resumes, you know, you want, you want to be the, the well-versed student. So not just, you know, going to school, getting the good grades, but, you know, what leadership qualities, you know, do you have? That's important to stand out, you know, as a graduate student um, as well and being, you know, involved on campus. So our affair encompasses, you know, not just the jobs and internship portions. And again, information regarding our career fair is going to be located um, in the handshake, and you'll be able to see the employers that are registered in addition to what opportunities they will be hiring for. Um, and then another thing that, that our office does um, do for our students is that we do monthly, um, you know, CAPS newsletters and employer spotlights. So our newsletter highlights not only our services, but they also highlight, you know, top jobs um, and internship opportunities um, for undergraduate and graduate students. Um, and then again, key resources that um, you can be on the lookout for, in addition to um, spotlights. So whenever, you know, uh, my team, our employer relations team, we're responsible for the employer engagement. So we build relationships um, with employers to provide, you know, opportunities for our students. So in the event that when I'm getting opportunities and they're looking for a certain caliber of student, um, you know, we have the ability to send those targeted email blasts out to you, as well as our career advisors sending them out um, as well. And then one of my favorites is that we do employer referrals. So if there's a job that you've applied for, you know, in Handshake, uh, we have the ability to send a referral over to that employer saying, hey, we have this NSU, you know, super sharp student uh, recently applied for opportunity. Here's their resume. So it's one step that you apply, but we have, the, again, that ability because of our relationships to reach out to that employer um, and, and send your resume as well. And then again, our office hours are Mondays through Fridays, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., um, we have drop-in advising hours as well as, um, you know, 30 minutes to an hour appointments, but our drop-in um, hours are those quick appointments, 15 minutes. So if you have any questions, um, but to get down to the nitty gritty, i.e., you know, you want to go in depth with your resume or, or cover letter or things of that nature, um, here are our hours of operation. Um, we offer appointments not only in person, but via phone and um, virtual appointments. And we're located on the first floor in the Horvitz administration um, building. And again, if you're looking to schedule an appointment um, with our office, as you can either do it through Navigate by selecting a career services appointment, because you won't be doing an academic appointment because you're graduate students, but you'll do a career services appointment, or you can call our office at the information listed um, below or email us. Any questions? No questions. Okay, well, thanks for your time and attention. And again, welcome, welcome to NSU. Thanks so much, Nima. So now we're gonna go ahead and turn it over to the director of our Writing and Communications Center, Kevin Borek. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you all for being here today. And it's really exciting to get to speak with you and congratulations on your decision to attend NSU. So as was just said, I am the executive director of the Writing and Communications Center. And the WCC, as you see here on your screen, is a place where you can, in person and virtually, get assistance with any writing or communication related project. So from the time you get your first assignment from the all the way through when you might be working through your final thesis or anything, you can work with one of our trained peer writing consultants. We have consultants who work at the undergraduate level. You probably don't want to work with them. We have 
consultants who work with our graduate students, they're the ones that you want to work with. And the way you do that is by going to this page, you can see up top, it's nova.edu slash WCC. You get to our landing page here, but then you scroll down a little bit to this area on the side where it says make an appointment. You'll click on that link and it will bring you to this page here. When you get to this page, you will register for an account and then you'll type in your email and your password that you create and you will see a weekly schedule of our consultants who are available and they will have white boxes uh, at the times of day that they are available and you click on those white boxes and you find out a little bit of information about who each of our consultants is and then you can be that smart shopper and determine who you want to work with and we are not just for writers who quote unquote struggle we are for all writers and i'll let you know that we do about 10,000 consultations per year. We work with over 3,000 individual NSU students each year, and most of them, I would dare say, are very, very good writers. They are people who understand the writing process. They are people who understand, and I say this very directly, they're people who understand the importance of writing for professional development and getting feedback as part of their own professional development. And so that is so critical to both our academic and professional success, not just having the strong communication skills to create a message and deliver it effectively to people, but to have the that ability to be able to talk with another person about your writing and hear their feedback and incorporate that feedback to make your messaging even stronger. And so that is what we do all day, every day. You'll see here in the middle that there are schedule types. You'll be choosing that grad professional. And we do most of our consultations at this level online for your convenience. If you are somebody who truly wants an appointment in person, simply contact us and we will make that happen for you. But again, for your convenience, they can be virtual online through Zoom, just like we're chatting right now. You see our phone number up here, just above that, give us a call. And again, we'll make that happen for you. Now, in addition to us being able to help you with your writing, we also employ graduate students. So you heard that reference earlier to JobX. If you would like to work with us, we have a lot of amazing opportunities to work remotely as well, which is a plus. And you can go to JobX, locate job number 1229, and you can become a professional, I'm sorry, a graduate peer consultant with us. And what I love about this job is that it allows all of our staff, our undergraduate students, our graduate students, the this ability to talk academic writing all day, every day, which just makes you, in turn, a better writer and a better communicator. You'll be talking so much about writing in your own discipline, which, again, creates a stronger familiarity with the conventions of these different var various genres, but also in your discipline, which again, makes you a better writer. So we are always searching for other people to be working with us. I think right now we've got about 45 undergraduates who work with us and about 20 or so, no, maybe about 25 graduate peer consultants. And so you'll be entering a really awesome community of like-minded people who really like to help others. And so that is what we do here. We just help you with your writing. So if you'd like to get that assistance, you come to this page and make an appointment, or if you'd like to work with us, go to job X 1229, apply, and that's what we offer. So if you have any questions, please let me know. And again, congratulations on entering the programs that you've entered. And the WCC is just here to help you.
because we have a bashful bunch this morning. <laughs> and uh, again, if you guys think of anything later on, even after the orientation has concluded here, feel free to contact any of us here in admissions and we can get you in contact with anyone that has been uh, talking with us today. Uh, but thank you so much, Kevin, for that. And then finally, we're going to be hearing from Pamela from our Office of Financial Aid. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Can everyone see my screen right now? Yep, looks good. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna do a brief overview on a how to fund for graduate school. Um, the topics I will discuss this morning are the FAFSA on the web, um, how to search for grants and scholarships, our Veterans Benefits Yellow Ribbon Program, and the Federal Direct Loan Program. We are your partners in funding your education and guiding you through the financial aid process, and we are committed to assuring quality service to our students here at NSU. Um, the first thing is, if you're applying for financial aid, you would apply for financial aid via studentaid.gov. When applying, everyone must create um, an FSA ID. The FSA ID is, is an electronic signature where you're going to sign your FAFSA form. Um, the FAFSA forms are available at studentaid.gov, or you can download it on your mobile app with My Student Aid mo mobile app. You can also use NSU school code, which is 00. 1509. Um, the FAFSA opens October 1st every year. It is open now for the 22-23 academic year, um, as well as 23-24. So if you want to get started, you can apply for both academic years at the same time. Um, I would advise you do that just to keep ahead of the game. Next, we're going to go for searching for grants and scholarships. NSU has a scholarship website that has several scholarships available to undergraduate and graduate students. Um, I would encourage you to complete our NSU general scholarship profile. What that is, is that it, it allows you to create a profile that um, when, once you put in your information, if scholarships become available, they will review that scholarship profile and offer you those scholarships if you meet that criteria, um, take advantage of that. Um, you can update that scholarship profile, for example, if you do any community service hours, if you work on campus with any faculty or staff, you can always add to that general scholarship profile. Next, I'm gonna talk about the NSU Yellow Ribbon Scholarship. Nova Southeast University has partnered with Veterans Administration to offer scholarships to our students who are United States veterans and or dependents of veterans. We've all given over a million dollars um, to those students and also those scholarships are available for doctorate and graduate professional students. Um, lastly, NSU, for graduate students, NSU offer the unsubsidized and graduate plus loans. These are federal direct loans. Um, the unsubsidized is, is given to you by the government, whereas the graduate plus loan is a credit worthy loan. You have to apply for that. That's over and above the unsubsidized. So if you need additional funding, the graduate plus loan is available to you. Um, keep in mind to if you don't need a loan, do not apply for the loan, um, but it is available for you. Our contact information is you can contact our contact center at 1-800-806-3680, or you can send an email to finaid at nova.edu. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask at this time.
Thank you. All right. Well, if you guys I know probably will think of any number of questions in regards to financial aid, as Pamela said, you can reach them all at their uh, email at the finaid at nova.edu. We're happy to pass that information along. All right. So at this time, we're going to be opening up the floor to just general questions. Uh, today with us here participating, we have several of our different faculty and uh, administrative staff members from our various departments to which all of you are going to be working with inside all of your programs here. I figure what we can do here first uh, from our side of things, just do a quick introduction for the representatives that we have with us today. Um, so first up, I just thought we'd want to hear, um, we have Dr. Ransford and uh, Claudette from National Securities. You guys just want to say hi. You don't have to turn on your cameras. But... Hi, how are you doing? I'm Ransford Edwards, Assistant Professor in the Department of Humanities and Politics. I'm the Graduate Coordinator for National Security Affairs and International Relations. And congratulations for everyone um, that's now embarking on their journey at Nova Southeastern University. Pleasant morning to all. Um, Ready your screen. Yeah. For Brooks. And uh, let me say a warm welcome to you all. I know um, you're quite excited to be a part of the Nova family, as we are excited to have you. Um, I'm the admin coordinator in the for this program. So if you have any questions, I'm sure you'd have seen my emails coming out to you already. Feel free to reach out to me at any time. Welcome. All right. Thanks, Claudette. Uh, we also have with us here today from the Department of Biological Sciences, uh, Dr. Matthew. Hello, I'm Matthew Johnston. I'm the coordinator for the research side of the Biological Sciences uh, uh, program, so thesis and capstone. So welcome, everybody, um, to NSU. Thank you, Dr. Johnston. Uh, we also have with us here today uh, for our students that are going to be in our Composition, Rhetoric, and Digital Media program, Dr. Bianchi. Good morning, everyone, and congratulations. Welcome to the NSU family. Um, I'm Melissa Bianchi. I am an assistant professor in the what we call CRDM program, so please feel free to direct any questions about that program to me. All right, and then for our uh, conflict analysis students, we're going to have one of our program coordinators and also an academic advisor, Lee. Good morning, everyone. I am the program manager and manager and academic advisor for the Department of Conflict uh, Resolution Studies. Uh, welcome to everyone, all the new students that's coming in, whether it be PhD, master's, or certificate. We're here to assist you. If you have any questions, we are here to guide you through your degree plan and any other academic uh, questions that you may have as you get started you know, in your new journey here at Nova University. Again, thank you and feel free to contact me at any time. All right, and then for all of my marine environmental science students, you've probably already talked with her once or twice at this time, but we also have Emma here from the Department of Marine Environment. Hello, it's nice to see you all again. Um, like we had gone over in your mandatory advising meetings. My name's Emma Brennan. I am the program coordinator for the entire Department of Marine Environmental Science, plus I'm your academic advisor. So if you have any questions that we haven't gone over in your advising meeting or you thought of after the fact, we can always talk about it now. All right, so we'll get right into it. I know we had one question already uh, from Michelle over here. Uh, so this is going to be for either you, Claudette, or uh, you, Dr. Ransford. So they were just wondering uh, if the programs were being offered in person for the certificate program for the winter semester. Courses, anyway, excuse me. Um, no, absolutely. Um, and I think Michelle is actually registered for my international relations course. So I will be seeing you um, via a hybrid format, which is right partially Zoom, and also students will be in the classroom. So we do have in person for this upcoming semester. All right, perfect. You guys have any other questions at this time? This is going to be the best moment to ask any questions as next week we close for the university holiday break on the 22nd. So you won't be hearing from most of these people until we come back in the new year. Hey, Teddy, I did have one thing for the students that are going to be in the marine science program. Um, I know Teddy had mentioned the uh, 
Oceanographic Campus parking pass. Um, that can be got, uh, I can give that out when you guys start. What you're going to do is you're just going to come to my office and I'm going to give you a nice goodie bag and it's also going to include that parking sticker. I'll go over where you have to place it. Um, you will come to a guard gate at the front. Uh, during that first week, you'll be able to get on without an issue, but after that, they will ask for um, some sort of sticker. So make sure you stop by my office that first week of classes. That way I can give you all the information. Great information there. Thanks, Emma. Uh, and Rick, uh, I know you were asking for best insight on science courses uh, for plan of study for marine environmental science. Yes, Emma is the best person to talk to. All right. Uh, Emma, they were just asking where your office was specifically. Oh, okay. So mine is in the GHOC, which is the big glass building. I'm going to be on the second floor in office 211A. You can always ask the receptionist um, if you need help. She's right before you have to get past those locked doors. Um, Rich, I know you had asked about science classes. You can always um, email me and ask for an advising appointment. We can set it up. We'll go over your plan of study and any questions you might have. All right. Thank you. Uh, we have one for you, Dr. Bianchi, from Michelle. Uh, when new CRDM students are assigned, or excuse me, when are new CRDM students assigned mentors? Is that required prior to starting classes? Hi, Michelle. Um, you should have received an email with your faculty mentor on it. Um, if you have not, I can go ahead and, and check it out in our files and I'll shoot you an email about who that is, okay? All right. And then uh, another one for national securities from Michelle Gehring. Uh, is it possible to take international relations class completely online uh, for the in-person component? Do you know how many in-person meetings will be required generally? So we have about 14 um, meetings. Um, they, they normally are required. We don't have an international relations course which is fully online. Uh, my apologies. Right. Thanks. Any other questions at this time? I don't have a question, Brett, but I do uh, would like to speak to the um, student system in the uh, conflict analysis and resolution studies. If you have not registered, please reach out to me um, as soon as possible, because as Brett said, we will be closing for the holidays. And if you're not sure of your classes, please reach out to me, because there are certain classes that's only offered in particular terms, and we do have some that's only offered this winter term. And if you miss it, then we and the next year before you can take it. So I'm here to to assist you if you need any help with your degree planning in terms of registering. Great point, Lee. Thanks so much. All righty. Well, I don't want to keep you guys too much longer here on a Friday morning. So thank you so much for joining us. And again, for anyone else that may have questions that come up later on, feel free to reach out to your program specific advisor, or we're more than happy to point you in the right direction here in admissions as well. Otherwise, uh, from here, us here in admissions, we wish you a happy holiday season, and we are looking forward to seeing you all in the new year.